Hello there DTS pilots, vegan drivers. This video is going to be a tutorial how to use the radar collision avoidance sub mode. That's right, the vegan has seen a whole bunch of updates this last Christmas, especially to the ground collision avoidance radar mode. It's now really, really good and I've been tinkering around with it and set up a flight down near Batumi in the middle of the night. There's a valley network there, mountains towering up either side and it's the perfect place to use this radar. So if that sounds like it might be of interest or fun to you, think of all the possibilities in this mission, creeping up on a SAM site or sneaking past air defences in less than optimal conditions. So if that sounds like it might be of interest to you, fantastic to have you with me, especially returning subscribers of the channel. Strap in, buckle up, because we're going to start right now. Okay, so to begin with, we're going to take a look at the key instruments we require in the Vigan. Now, don't be tempted to skip ahead just because you think, well, I've flown thousands of aircraft, 99% of the instrumentation is the same. Yes, I agree, but in the case of the Vigan and the terrain avoidance stuff at night, it is a little different and we need to be absolutely sure that we've got it right. Beginning with the left-hand side, we see we've got the AFK in red there, that's the Vigan's auto throttle, and we've got the stability assist, that bright green light just to the left of it. I highly suggest that these two are turned on that just allow you to forget about the flight characteristics of the Vigan and focus entirely on the rest of what's going on. Next of all, we've got the artificial horizon, which works just like any other. To the left hand side, we've got a little arrow triangly thing. That is the vertical speed indicator. But very importantly, we've got overlaid a crosshair. We see a vertical yellow line. This is going to be our lateral guidance, much like an ILS indicator. Do we turn to the left? Do we turn to the right? And underneath, we've got a horizontal bar. And again, just like on an ILS, this is going to be our vertical guidance. Do we need to climb or descend? The climb and descent is based on our ref altitude. And our ref altitude is based on the altitude above the ground level. This is so useful. And I will go into that in more detail in a bit. But for now, just know that the vertical guidance bar is very sensitive, but always useful and the lateral guidance bar will take us to the next waypoint, but is not always the best way to go, especially if there's a huge mountain in the way. I've decided to do the ref thing now before I forget. So here we are in the Vigin and we are flying along and we manually aim for a height that we choose. Let's say 200 meters above the ground. Remember the Vigin is in meters. Once we get to this height and we say, yes, we're happy here, we'll press the ref button and it will set the system to configure right. 200 meters is how high you want to be above the ground a little further along and even though we've been flying completely level because the ground beneath us has dipped away the radar altimeter recognizes hey you should be at 200 meters it's now 300 meters that line on the artificial horizon moving down indicating to us that we need to move down in addition to that there'll also be some symbology on the heads up display that changes as well that i'll cover in a minute and with us now being further down and the terrain in front of us rising at this point our radio altimeter is going hey the ground's coming up at us if you don't do something right now we're gonna crash and so not only do we see the vertical bar moving up as well as the symbology on the heads up display we also get a big red flashing light right next to the radar it's impossible to miss especially at night it is so bright telling us we need to climb and climb now and last but not least before we get over to the radar itself on the top right hand corner we see we're heading towards waypoint one that's what that b1 indicates and immediately beneath that we see a steam gauge showing us how far it is until we get there in this case it's 25 26 kilometers something like that these waypoints auto update so when we reach waypoint one it's automatically going to move over to waypoint two so we can completely focus on the task at hand another real useful feature Ideally, you want to be starting in the Vigin with the waypoints pre-programmed from the mission editor side just to make it easier for yourself. And then you've got the following controls. Briefly, A2 puts the radar on and into the right mode. We then need terrain collision avoidance mode button. That's the second one. And finally, we've got the reference button. You may also want to put the range increase and decrease in there as Enough well. Enough nonsense. Let's now jump into the Vigin as we are about to undergo our flight through the valley starting at the city of Batumi. So first of all, as we descend down, I want to show you what happens when we press the ref button. We see these lines, these three lines on the heads up display currently below the big horizontal line. This is saying that we're too high. We can see that copied on the left side on the artificial horizon. I'm going to press that ref button and when I do watch all these things jump up. 
The main figure you see at the top is our altitude or radal and just to the right we see the vertical lines. These are going to move up and down based on how we're doing versus the ref alt that we have just set. If you take a look there we just see waypoint 2 jumping in and in the left hand turn now we're flying over the river now leading towards the entrance of the valley. Let's jump over to day mode so we can have a little look at the lay of the land and then back to the radar. Pausing for the first time, I'm going to divide the picture up. We can see that above the horizon, almost all of it is clear apart from a couple of little dots. Those little darker areas are the radar return. So there is some sort of hill or structure further back. If we look right down to the bottom of the screen, we also see a large clear area. Now, this isn't to say that there's no terrain down there whatsoever. It's just to say relative for how high we are flying. If there is any terrain down there, it's not of any concern because we're well clear of it. If we look to the left, we see that there's a large darker area that corresponds to a large mountain that's just to the left. And there's another darker area off to the right. The closer and closer we would get to the hill, the larger the dark area would become. We also see that right in the middle between the two darker areas is an area of no return. And once again, this means it is sufficiently beneath our aircraft that we really don't need to worry about it. And as this radar picture looks right now, I'd be more than happy to fly in a straight line and not steer at all for at least the next however many seconds until the image changes. I'm going to let it play now and you can just watch the radar image evolve for a bit. You'll, if you look carefully, you'll see this little line whizzing side to side. That's, of course, the radar sweep and the red number 15 beneath it showing the range is set to 15 kilometers. I should have mentioned that earlier. You can, of course, adjust this range and I do recommend 15 for flying through valleys like this. So do check your controls uh, if you do want to change that as well. So here we are, let's try doing it this time without pausing. We're approaching waypoint two. You can see the range on the right there just ticking down somewhere between three and two kilometers. And clearly up front is a dark area. That's the big hill in front of us. You see, there's a little dark area, lower left and lower right. Those are the terrains or the hills immediately to our side. And now we see that a brief flash of the red light there. And we can see the dark area slightly sloping up to the left. That's because the terrain is slightly further away from us to the left. So we need to turn left. We see now already that the waypoint has jumped over to waypoint three. We've got the radio altimeter that I'm trying to keep the 200 or 250 meters. I've got that red light, of course, if there's a sudden terrain that I need to pull back. Here's another classic one. We see the terrain sweeping from right to left this time. So I'm going to turn left again, trying to aim for the terrain that's further away the whole time, which is what you'd want to do flying along a valley. So the whole time it's a cross check between the radar sweep at the bottom to see do I need to be left or right. And then looking up on the heads up display to see how's my height doing and then checking back down. A quick glance to the artificial horizon on the left. How am I doing with respect to the next waypoint? Of course, we've got that vertical bar as well on the left, giving us up down guidance. It's very, very sensitive, so you don't always need to react to it. It will, of course, bump up and down for every building and thing that it crosses. Then a glance to the right. How far are we away from the next waypoint? And then back into the middle. Here we see again, there's a little sweep from right to left once more. So I'm going to turn left to try and intercept that. We see that dark area getting very close to our aircraft now. So I already know I need to be climbing at this point. See, that's what I'm doing there. The uh, instrument on the left is telling us to climb more, climb more. No red light, so I'm not panicking. And that looks like we've managed it. We see the bar leveling off and possibly even descending. So there's a little ridge. Now we see this uh, darker area to the left coming in. So we already know we need to turn right now. We need to turn right to get again following the terrain round and having now achieved that here we see a very easy obvious canyon now look at those two dark lines meeting in the middle we see it's slightly darker over to the left in the distance that's just because the hill over to the left is higher up now a very definitive sweep once again there's only one way to turn if you see a diagonal line like this and that's towards the place where the slash is the highest in this case once again to the left Getting closer on both sides again, so I might be thinking of climbing, but first I'm going to try weaving to the right and then to the left. 
Just because you see a dark area very close to the left doesn't mean you've passed it. It means it's very, very close to you. Don't turn left. Okay, I'll pause here and take a very important note on display. If we imagine this radar scope is looking out left and right, left and right, we see these returns to the very low left and it'd be tempting to think, hey, that's 30 or 40 degrees off to my left hand side. I don't need to be concerned with that. Now that is the case if something's several miles away. However, the closer and closer something gets, 20 30 degrees off to one side or 40 degrees off to one side can be very very close so don't get fooled by seeing darker areas to the very sides and think ah, i don't need to worry about it as those darker areas get closer and closer to the bottom of the square no matter whether they're left center or right you need to be aware of them I feel that we've got a little hang of how this radar works. I'm going to show a little bit of how it works during the day because there's a couple of concepts that are absolutely vital to understand. Here we see that there's a dark area on the lower screen. That doesn't mean there's a massive hill that's higher than we are. In this case, it's indicative of a city that's right in front of us. The key difference is going to be as we get closer to this dark area, if it's a massive hill, the dark area is going to get bigger. If it's a city that's passing harmlessly below us, it's simply going to disappear and we're going to get a blank return. Coming up to a couple of ridge lines here, pause it there real quick. If we look lower left, we've got some terrain here. We've also got the larger ridge on the right here. And there's a little gap in the middle. Look. How does it know there's a gap? Well, it doesn't, but it does see the two pieces of terrain and it cannot see a return behind this first piece of terrain because it's masking it. Just like your eyes, you can't see behind these trees. They're in the way, right? You can't see what's behind it. And because it can't see, there's no radar return. The higher you are, the better the radar can see. That's because it's got more degrees to work with. So higher, more degrees, better picture. The lower you are, it's got fewer degrees and it cannot build a very good picture. You try flying low with the radar collision mode on daytime and look how bad the picture is. Just remember the higher you are, the more likely it is for the enemy to see you. So if you are trying to run, I suggest 200, 250 meters ish through the valley. I found that works particularly well for me. And until next time, take care wherever in the world you may be good morning good afternoon good evening and good night yeah that's right i've just had somebody on the phone from back to me talking about a fast moving plane at night that's what i told him i said there's nobody anyone in their right mind is flying a jet down that valley to yeah that's right they can't see anything just yeah 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 forget about it forget but stand down that's it just tell your boys forget about it stand down go back to drinking yeah if there is an invasion it ain't happening tonight all right yeah take care cheers bye